Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Sparesbox. Day two on the Sigma. In the last episode, you guys would have seen that we had to shorten the strut bodies because the struts were actually going to be too long. Obviously, that's going to mean we're going to need shorter struts. Our Camry struts have now turned up so we can actually build the whole thing today. Also, we're no longer going to just rattle can the struts. I'm not happy with the rattle can finish. It's, it's not nice. It's not going to last forever. So we're going to basically get the whole car back together, work out if and what needs to be changed, do our final weld. Once that's all done, we'll probably send the struts away to powder coat it. We'll just sit the car in the corner with no struts in it. But the finish will be more durable. Um, we do have to pull the struts out again anyway because our, uh, our strut tops are off getting made so that we've got camber adjustment and things like that. But plenty happening. Hopefully you guys get a bit out of this episode. We're going to explain how to shorten the strut. Uh, well, the way I believe to be the correct way, the strongest way. And right at the end of it, you guys are going to see some cool new stuff on the Sigma, so stay tuned for that. I've worked out where we're going to mount our coilover collar, which is about 150 mil, sorry, 160 mil from the bottom of the leg uh, to the bottom of the coilover sleeve. Unfortunately, what I've just worked out is the, the lower spindle mount's not actually, the top face is not parallel. So I started measuring it up, and basically this cut line was not going to be square to the strut body. So what I've done is actually just measure from the top down 160 mil. Uh, that gives us our cut line. So basically that's halfway in the middle of the sleeve. And then any shortening we do is going to end up inside this sleeve. So the sleeve's also going to end up as a strengthener because we've modified these sleeves so that we can actually weld the top and the bottom to the strut body now. So that'll uh, give it heaps more strength. It's all very uh, scientific, this. We've got our uh, lower leg cut down. We've got our shock in there, which is a SV21 Camry shock. Uh, interestingly, I've also measured the diameter here and it's exactly the same as the stock Sigma, so 15 millimeters, which is fantastic for me because I bought a $48 uh, blacksmith step down shank drill to drill those strut tops and I had a 14 or a 16. So if that was 14 or 16 mil, I'd be crying pretty hard right now. Um, but that's another story. So we've got our shock in here. We've got the original top section of the strut body. So basically what I've done is just sat the nut on here and I'm just, just eyeing it up for now. We'll take some measurements and uh, that'll give us the amount of material that we've actually got to cut off this uh, top section so that we can weld it together. And as I previously mentioned, we're basically going to use uh, the coilover sleeve as a reinforcing sleeve. So what I want to do is actually basically end up with this just below the threaded section. So I don't want to be welding to the thread here and damage it, but I think we'll be pretty right. looks like we're basically going to end up in pretty much where we want to be. So we'll uh, give that a good trim up and weld it back together. 90 millimeters exactly. So I'm going to cut this back to 90 mil, which is some other sort of stupid measurement, which isn't metric. Three and a half inches, look at that. For those playing at home, cutting down Sigma struts in America, which don't exist. Good chat, glad we've had it. Now, if I've done this properly, with this nut all the way down, we should have a slight gap. Damn it. That's good. We need to shorten that top tube a little bit. So what you want basically is when you've got about a millimetre of gap in that top nut, you want the strut to be retained because currently that shock will move around and rattle and be really annoying. Yeah, we've got a couple of mil there, so we'll uh, knock a bit more off that and go again. The old... Uh, Measure twice, cut once type thing. Or so it seems. Just lop a bit off it, should be sweet. So now that that's all on, that's all looking pretty good. I'm gonna end up somewhere like that at the end of it. Would you like to comment on your invention? No, if I tell everyone I'll have to kill them. Nah, so this is a little jig that I've made up so that we can bolt both halves of the strut into the jig to basically lock it, lock it all together and keep it square. 
Um, this is made out of fairly light gauge steel, so it's fairly flim. Like it's good enough for what we're going to do, but I mean, if you're going to be cutting struts down every other day, you'd want to make it out of a bit heavier gauge steel, but once it's bolted in there, it'll be pretty well good to go. So we're going to bolt both halves in there. Obviously make sure you pay mega attention when you're putting this in. Because if you happen to weld this in backwards and put the thread towards the body, you're buggered. So I haven't done it because I've never actually cut struts down before, but if someone's going to do it, it's going to be me. So watch this space. The idea of this jig isn't actually to weld the whole way around uh, in it. So what I'm going to do is basically just get three tacks, then uh, check it for square with a straight edge. And then as long as I'm happy with that, we'll do the fourth tack. Once we've rolled it around in the jig, I can and remount it and tack it up again. Then yeah, we'll check it for straightness just using a ruler. We'll just basically hold the ruler along the shock body and that'll, that'll basically tell us if it's straight or not. Um, we've got to be pretty conscious of it being all, my, all but dead straight because these are a very tight fit onto this body. So if this doesn't slide down, it obviously we're going to have a drama. Um, with the welds too, we've just given it a good, good little cutback. I've just chamfered both sides of the tube so that we've got good penetration. Um, we'll probably have to grind these welds back same thing to get the sleeve over. Uh, I don't normally recommend grinding welds back because if you, if you need a grinder, you're an angle grinder, not a welder. Um, in saying that, I'm not the best welder, so I can't really comment, but um, yeah, because we have to obviously put this sleeve over the top of that weld, you've got to try and get a good bit of penetration, but also not have a massive weld build on the outside. So for that reason, we're going to tig all of this stuff. So, but then the other thing you gotta be mindful of is not getting uh, weld on the inside of the tube. So that's the reason we've got pretty pretty tight gaps. So we'll concentrate on welding the two bits of the tube together, not putting filler rod inside. Um, worst comes to worst because of the depth, you can grind it out, but I try and avoid putting a die grinder down there because on the, on the off chance you hit these threads, obviously gonna cause more damage. So we'll uh, go and weld this up poorly. Here we go, pass the point and no return. So good, look at that. Couple of mil. Once you nick that up with the Stilsons, it's very tight and it doesn't bottom the nut out, so pretty happy with that. No thread deformation, winner. Building the coilovers. It's hot shine to that. We've reached the halfway point. We've obviously finished our left strut completely. Now we have a coilover assembly. Uh, the spring is flapping around a little bit because we don't have helper springs yet. I do have some, I think I've got some at home. And obviously that's our original Sigma strut. So you can see just how much shorter it is. Uh, we've shortened the body about 70 millimeters, but the damper shaft is also shorter as well. So that should give us a fair bit more um, or a fair bit less uh, strut length overall. So. Pretty happy with that. We may or may not actually just change the spring length as well. Like I do have some strange springs over there that are a bit longer, uh, but they're quite soft. So potentially we'll um, just order some more springs. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, obviously we're trying to use up parts I've got lying around. So 
I'd rather just use stuff that's here than, than buying another set of springs. Even on these, even on the cheap, these coilovers will probably end up costing me about a thousand bucks to build, which is dearer than if you bought BC uh, generic weld-ons, but the problem being with that is you still don't have a strut top. Um, so that price does include the strut top that we're getting as well, we don't have yet. Um, so yeah, weld-on sleeves, the new shocks, the springs, all that gear, um, plus a strut top, and then that's not including labour or anything, but I mean, if you're gonna attack this thing yourself, you're not gonna charge yourself out at anything, so. Um, yeah, cool little learning exercise for me. It's, it's not something I've done before. Um, the only thing I will recommend if you're gonna attack this is to make sure you're confident in your welding. I know that these are welded on properly because we already cut one off and it was a mission to get the sleeve off. Previously, we'd only welded the bottom, whereas now we've welded the top and the bottom and we've got a joining weld in the middle under the weld on sleeve. So yeah, I'm pretty confident these are not gonna go anywhere. Um, so yeah, we're gonna whack this left one in and just throw a hub on it quickly. We've also sent the brake discs out for machining just to get a quick skim on them um, while they're apart. Now's the time to do it. We've also got some uh, hub seals, so we're gonna repack the bearings while we're here. So just trying to do a few little jobs uh, while it's apart rather than doing one thing and doing another thing later and having to do 25 different things over the next couple of weeks. So try and get everything done today and, and we'll uh, get it rolling again. Yes, I know there's no brakes on here. Front shocks were original, 100%. There's no marking on them. They still work. Still good. Press sandwiches. That's a good looking sandwich. Plop's such an interesting word. Plop. It sounds like the action. It sounds like what it's trying to hmm. describe. There's got to be a word for that too. Steve. Plop. Show the people. That's awesome. They're probably the original bearings. You may wonder what I'm doing. I'm packing the grease in the bearings. You can get fancy grease packers, but this is the technique I was taught and it's the one I still use. So you basically just get a good old glob of grease in your hand and just start picking the grease off and working it through the bearing. And then you can see when you've when you got enough in it, it starts to come through. So you just keep rotating it around. If you're doing the voiceover live, but you're physically in the same space as the camera, is it actually a voiceover? Breaks in your face, London. Mm -hmm. 
So good. I'm so stoked with how this has turned out. We've got the coilovers in the front, we've got lowered springs in the back, we've got new shocks all around. Uh, I've re-greased and readjusted the front wheel bearings, so now there's no play. I did skim the discs while we were there. We do have a lot of brake stuff still coming. Um, spares box are getting that up to us as soon as they can. But the thing we haven't mentioned is the wheels. So our Volk Mesh three-piece are currently at Barrel Brothers being widened, but um, I'm a little bit impatient. So we had these Enki Mesh wheels. They're not performance hot wires or they're not CSA hot wires. Uh, these were made by Enki in Japan in 1978 or thereabouts. But yeah, we basically just sent these to Barrel Brothers for a quick uh, paint and refurb. So we've had the, basically they paint the whole wheel gold and then diamond cut the face. But I wanted to go a little bit extra and we diamond cut where the wheel nut section is. Primarily this style of wheel, they normally leave that the wheel color. But I wanted to go more of a full, full diamond cut look. Um, they've turned out fantastically and I'm super pumped to have them on. So like I said, these, we're still gonna do the three-piece wheels there, but they're gonna take a little bit of time. So I wanted to get something on here for basically to set the suspension up. The sizes are still smaller than what we're gonna go with, but even just having these on the car, it's totally transformed the look of it, just lowering it and putting some nice new wheels on it or, or refurbed wheels. It's just giving it a whole new look. Um, obviously, once we start to, to address the cosmetics, like the damage guard, the bent bumper, all the, the major dings in it, we, we're gonna sort of start to attack that fairly soon. I've got a few ideas on how to pull that out. Hopefully that'll work. Um, obviously we've got to repair the rear quarter. Uh, like I mentioned before too, Alan that we bought the car from originally, he's actually given me a litre of paint that was mixed up for this car. So I'm super stoked. Um, but yeah, basically we're pretty much done for today. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, learning how to chop up the struts. It was a learning curve for me as well. I haven't done this before. I have done the weld on coilover style conversion before, but I've never shortened the strut. So it was pretty interesting to see how that all went together. It just looks awesome, I love it. I, the gold works really well with the orange, which I wasn't 100% wasn't sold on, but I did want to go with that gold mesh look. So having it on the car now, it's just, yeah, it made my day. So I'm, I'm pretty wrapped with it. Like I only got these from Barrel Brothers yesterday. Um, they even fitted the tires and balanced them for me. So that was awesome. But yeah, I'm just so pumped. Like. Yeah, I'm so keen to get this on the road and drive it. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll pack up for today. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Sigma!